Good tattoos have been around a long, long time, but you know what's been around longer? Bad tattoos. Before they were good tattoos, they were really bad ones because they didn't know how to make good tattoos yet. I think that, I mean, that makes sense in my head. Tattoos have been a thing for a long time. They have a lot of cultural history, but recently with the introduction of being able to just buy a tattoo gun from Amazon for like a hundred bucks, a lot of bad tattoos are coming out of the woodwork. Anyone can just call themselves a tattoo artist these days. Uh, yeah, I, I tattooed my my buddy Derek with a tattoo gun I bought I bought off eBay. I'm pretty much ready to compete on Ink Master. It doesn't help that tattoo culture has just absolutely exploded over the last like 20 years. And I think I've talked about this before, but just with the introduction of MTV, Ink Master, did I mention Ink Master? <laughs> I've watched every season of that show, but with the rise in mainstreamification of this industry, just made that word up, it has also given rise to a lot of tattoo artists that are not really good at their jobs, unfortunately. That brings us to what we're going to be talking about today, which is a TikToker that has gone viral for her $160 cover-ups that she does for people. All cover-ups, $160. Seems like a good deal. Seems like, hey, 160 bucks, not a lot of money for a cover-up. Not a lot of money for a tattoo in general. I'm sure they can't be bad. I'm, sh I'm definitely sure it's not one of those get what you pay for situations. Couldn't be one of them. Let's take a look. Now look, full disclosure, I am not a tattoo artist, okay? I have tattoos, I have multiple tattoos. I've watched every single season of Ink Master since it came out, so. Actually, now that I think about it, I guess I kind of am a tattoo artist. I'm not in any way, shape or form qualified to be like, this is good tattoo technique, this is bad. But what I do have are eyes. And what I see does not look good, okay? What I see does not look good at all. With that in mind, take what I say with a grain of salt. We're just having a little bit of fun here. It's pretty crazy. It's wild. Anyway, let's take a look. This is the TikTok page of the uh, TikToker tattoo artist in question. And their description is tattooing for Christ, set up an appointment, link in bio. Isn't there something in the Bible that states like tattoos are bad? Do I think that this tattoo artist is a bad person? No, she has talked about before that she, you know, helps out a homeless shelter. She does a lot of good charitable things. And there is definitely an argument to be made that at some point, can you really blame the tattoo artist if they have hundreds and hundreds of videos on their TikTok and their Instagram showing what their work looks like? There's also the argument to be made that, hey, maybe they don't know what they're looking for. You know, maybe they were just a little bit careless with it and they're just like, oh, whatever, I don't really care. There's also the argument to be made that, hey, if they're happy, then that's all that matters. And you know, I hope that most of the clients are happy. However, some of the faces of the clients when they see their tattoo do not tell the same story. But yeah, do I think she's a bad person? No. Do I think she's bad at tattooing? Absolutely yes. So this gentleman has come in with two tattoos that he wants to get covered up on his arm. One being a love heart with a little rose on it that says PJ. Aww. The second thing, I don't really know. It kind of, it says Legacy Vets USA, so I'm imagining it's potentially a motorcycle club for veterans by the looks of it. I don't really know. All I know is he wants to get it covered up. And a lot of the time, what this tattoo artist likes to do is, is pick two or three different themes, you know, that the client will say and she'll She'll mash them all together into one tattoo. And uh, in this particular one, she's decided to keep the same theme as the other tattoo, which is a little plague doctor on the forearm. So can you imagine what kind of theme she's gonna be going with here? Can you imagine what the tattoo might be? Maybe it'll be a giant f***ing rat. Maybe it'll be a giant bacteria. Maybe it'll be some something plague related. What do, you, what do you think? Because let me tell you right now, you'll never guess what it is. But before we find out what she did for the cover-up, I think it's only fair that we design our own cover-ups. And maybe you guys can decide in the comments, just who did it better? Now for this first cover up, keeping in theme with the whole plague and plague doctor kind of thing, I decided to play on that. And what did, what's the first thing you think of when you think of plague? Giant rat, okay? So that that's obviously a, a rat that has the plague. You can't really see that it has the plague, but that that's kind of the, that's kind of the whole thing with the plague, you know? That's kind of what makes it so scary. It could be any rat and and, and that's and that's one of the rats. And then above that, we have a small uh, Victorian boy that has died from the plague and is being being eaten by said rats. Um, quite a terrifying concept, really, when you think about it. Uh, I don't think it gets much scarier than that. Honestly, I don't see how she can top this design, but uh, let's see just what she came up with. That's right. 
What she chose to cover up those tattoos is another plague doctor. You know, nothing better than getting the exact same f***ing thing that you have tattooed on your arm, tattooed again, even bigger, and way worse than the original tattoo. But you want to know what the craziest part of all about this tattoo is? It's that if you just Google Plague Doctor Tattoo, the very first result that comes up is clearly the reference that she's used to tattoo this. So unfortunately, not only does this guy have a tattoo that he's probably not gonna like in the future, he also has stolen art on his arm, which really sucks. Really sucks for him, really sucks for the artist that probably originally did this Plague Doctor tattoo and that she's just stolen. It just sucks for everyone. And hey, references are used all the time by tattoo artists. Tattoo artists use references and they combine stuff together to make their own tattoo. But it's not exactly a reference when you just take the Google image and then trace it and then put it on someone else's body. That's not really a reference. That's, ju that's just imitation. That's just stealing someone else's art. Let's take a look at his reaction. I went same theme, but we threw in gears and spider webs and everything else. Is that sick or what? <laughs> I know. My favorite are the gears. <laughs> this is the exact reaction that I have whenever I go to like a barber or a hairdresser and they spin me around in the chair and they go, so what do you think of the haircut? Yeah. No, it's cool. That's that's badass. Yeah, that's sick. Thank you. And I have to pay for this, correct? I have to pay for you fing my shit up. Okay, cool. Sweet. She says that her favorite part of the tattoo are the gears, which other than the rose are the only part of the tattoo that she probably didn't steal. And unfortunately, like a lot of Melbourne properties, this tattoo is good from afar, but far from good. When you look at the gears, I mean, they're not even circles. <laughs> and hey, again, not a tattoo artist. I know that circles are one of the hardest things to do as a tattoo artist. A perfect circle is really very difficult. But this is going to be on someone's body forever. If you can't do a circle, please don't do one. Please do not do one on somebody's body, please. Overall, the tattoo looks like the original tattoo if it was photocopied and it was like that weird low resolution, kind of like losing a lot of its detail. And overall, I just I just feel sorry for every, every party involved in that. And the thing that you've got to know about tattoos is that the day that you get them on your body is the best that they are going to ever look in your entire life. The ink is the darkest and the most saturated. The lines are the cleanest. The tattoo looks fresh and all the detail is there. As time goes on, six months, 12 months down the line, depending on how it heals, some lines can fall out. The lines start to bleed and fade and the tattoo turns from a black to a green or a blue, depending on how your body reacts to the ink. It only looks worse from here. It's only downhill from here. And especially if the ink isn't put into your skin by like a skilled tattoo artist, then it's just going to get worse quicker. So I feel bad. I feel bad for everyone involved in this. But she loves it. She's proud enough to post it on TikTok, which is fucking crazy to me. This tattoo artist also does this thing where she does $100 blindfold tattoos, where I guess the client just doesn't see the stencil before it's put on. Which is a crazy risky game to play for something that's going to be on your body forever. But hey, that's, that's not for me to judge. You know, that's the client. That's the client's fault. That is not the tattoo artist's fault. She She's just capitalizing on people's recklessness. This tattoo that I'm about to show you only took 40 minutes and was only a hundred dollars. That is not a brag. Hey, I'm going to be real with you right now. That is not a brag. Okay. She does this a lot where she brags about how short of a time it took to do every tattoo. Hey, I did this tattoo for $300 and only took an hour. Not a good thing. I would rather sit in the chair for three hours and the tattoo be good and have the tattoo artist take their time with it than have some rush thing that you've just thrown together just to try and get the client in and out of the chair as quick as possible and get your money as fast as possible. This client comes in and you can see on her ankle, she has what looks like a little Harry Potter tattoo, a little a little glasses and a, and a Harry Potter scar, which might give you a little indication as to what this tattoo is gonna be. And uh, well, without further ado, My God, what did they do to my boy Dobby? Again, this is one of those tattoos where it's probably good from afar, but as you take a look closer, it is far from good. What the hell is going on with the windows at Hogwarts? One of those windows is right on the line of one of the towers, which you know is going to be blown out when it heals and it's all just going to merge into one blob. Also, what the hell is going on with the tower next to it? Why is it? It's not even straight. I mean, the more you look at this, the worse it gets. You know what the worst part of all is? It's got this little Deathly Hallows sign down the bottom. Oh, except it's, I think it's missing something. Yeah, the 
wand. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's three shapes and she forgot one. She forgot. It's a triangle, it's a circle, and it's a little line. There's a little line down there. And she forgot the line. What? What is going on here? Maybe you should have stolen the reference one for one this time. Again, I just feel so horrible for the clients that get this. And I, I hope that they are happy with their tattoos. I really do. Because like I said, if they're happy with it, then that's all good. That's all that matters at the end of the day. But just from a face value, this is not good. What's up? You want to come up here? Get up here, boy. <laughs> oh, Frankie. You have a tattoo, don't you, Frank? Even Frank has a tattoo. He's got a de-sex tattoo in his ear right there. I don't know if you can see that. My boy's inked up. All right, we're gonna take a look at this next tattoo while Frank stares at me talking the whole time. It's kind of weird. This next tattoo is another $160 cover up. I'm sure you're wondering, like me, why is this guy getting this awesome tattoo covered up? You wanna, you wanna know, you wanna know his reasoning? It's supposed to be 3D. The tattoo was supposed to be 3D. That's a fair enough thing to be annoyed at, because as you can see, the tattoo is is 2D. It is very 2D. But I think that this is something that might be able to be fixed with a little bit of shading, a little bit of making it 3D. That's what I thought he'd do, but it turns out he chose three subjects to cover this tattoo up and they were Egyptian, geometrical, and horror. Now it's time for my cover-up idea. Now when I think of Egyptian, geometric, and horror, my mind only goes to one place and that is of course the hit TV show and trading card game Yu-Gi-Oh. So that's why I decided to cover up this Dragon Ball Z tattoo with none other than Yami Yugi. We hit the theme of Egyptian as the game Duel Monsters in the show was invented by Egyptians and Yami Yugi himself is in fact an ancient pharaoh. So that really hits that part of the theme just right on the head. And if we cast our eyes down a little bit further, we can see the geometric theme is hit right there with the Millennium Puzzle. That is of course Yami Yugi's um, ancient puzzle. As you can see, it is a shape, which I'd say is pretty geometric. As for the horror theme, well, well, I mean, look at it pretty scary. Let's see what she came up with. And boom, here, here it is in all its glory. I can see the Egyptian. I can see the geometric, uh, but I can't really see the horror in this tattoo. Maybe if we take a look a little bit closer, we might be able to see the horror. And look, to give her credit where credit is due, this is definitely one of her better tattoos. I actually do really like the, uh, the little Anubis. Except when we take a look a little bit closer on his collar, I mean, what is going on here? Nothing is really lined up correctly. The black isn't even completely black on his collar. One side of the collar is black and then the other side of the collar is white uh, so she either forgot to shade or she just lost track of which line she was supposed to shade and which one she wasn't so it's kind of a bit lopsided the worst part is take a look at the scarab wings i mean it's not even at all there's no attention to detail the scarab has what looks like lego hands for feet and in terms of uh, geometric none of those lines are straight and some of them are blown out i feel Again, just awful for this guy. Just horrible for everybody involved. I am not an artist, but I can tell what a bad tattoo is. And these are just not good, okay? They're not good tattoos. This next one that's gonna be covered up is some text that says, trust nobody. I don't really wanna make jokes, you know, at the expense of the clients because at the end of the day, they're the ones with the tattoos that went wrong. So I do feel really bad for them, but I can definitely see the irony in getting a trust nobody tattoo and then going to a tattoo artist that you really probably shouldn't be trusting to cover up that tattoo. Well, this client shouldn't trust her. She can certainly trust me. I decided to keep this one simple and just add a little just kidding in brackets there. I think rather than cover it up, doing this just shows she's a little bit funny, she's a little bit goofy, she doesn't take herself too seriously. And um, and yeah, as you can see, I also really had to blur this. I mean, you the original video was, it was a lot. It was a lot. I'd probably get demonetized. It was a lot. Let's see what the tattoo artist came up with. And there it is. A very small tattoo. Trust nobody was covered up with a giant fucking butterfly. I hope you like butterflies because your entire chest is one giant butterfly. And let's just take a look at the actual butterfly itself. One wing connects on the head of the butterfly for some goddamn reason. The other one anatomically is correct, the left wing. The wings don't line up at all, uh, not even close. And worst of all, I can still see the other tattoo. So is this really a cover up? I think you just put a giant butterfly on her chest. Crazy thing to do. Absolutely crazy thing to do to somebody. But hey, if she's happy with it, then that's all that matters, right? That's all that matters. If she's happy with it, it's fine. This next one that's getting covered up is like a wolf and a cat kind of outline. And I can totally see why she would want to get it removed. I don't think it's that bad. I think if you 
took it to an artist and got the tattoo finished, then I think it could look really cool, but I totally understand she wants to get it covered up. What do you think she's gonna cover it up with? Maybe like a flower? Maybe like a, like a plant or something like that, something florally? Well, you're half correct if you thought that. You kinda, you're half correct. Let's take a look. <laughs> Weird! It didn't even cover up the other tattoo. That's the craziest part of all. And you can see by by her reaction to seeing it, she's not overly thrilled. She's just a kind of like a light smile, like a, oh, f my life. Okay. So I got an outline of a cat and a wolf covered with green plants. Sticking with the plant theme, I thought I'd take my own little twist on it. And uh, I decided that to cover this up, I would just put a fruit bowl on there. It's complete with a pineapple, a regular apple, a lemon. Uh, I don't, I don't really know what the green thing is. I, th I think, I think that's a pear. We got an orange, a banana, and a giant bean pod. I know that that's not a fruit, but I decided to take some artistic liberty there and kind of get a bit abstract with it. I kind of prefer mine, I'm not gonna lie. She has a video pinned to her page that basically addresses the hate on her tattoos. And she's replying to a comment in it saying, I'm going through many videos and not seeing why everybody's hating your girl. I'm confused. And then another comment comes up saying they're hating because she's blowing up for one and for two, she's out here doing cheap tattoos and trades. Well, she is blowing up because she's doing cheap tattoos and trades, but that it's not because they're good cheap tattoos you know everyone in the comments is just kind of laying into her and and the client's tattoos unfortunately about just how horrible they are and that's kind of the only reason they're going viral i have said this before in other videos but there definitely are two main reasons why you would go viral and it, that is of course people laughing with you and people laughing at you and sometimes when there's not a lot of likes on a video but there's three thousand comments you know which category you sit in. She then goes on in this video to show off some tattoos and tell everyone how little time they took, which, like I said before, not a brag. It is It is not a brag. This first one, look at the dots. There, there's no dots on both sides. Like, it's not symmetrical. The line work is not at all clean. Nothing about this tattoo is really redeemable. I mean, the rose is probably the best part. To be completely honest, I think she could be an okay tattoo artist if she stayed away from geometric and like mandala kind of tattoos that rely heavily on, on just line work and things being symmetrical. She then shows another one, less than one hour, only $100 again looking at the lines shocking one for three hundred dollars that was only an hour and to be honest not horrible and look the rest of this video the list goes on and on and they are all not amazing tattoos and the point she was trying to prove in this video has just done the complete opposite in my eyes which is just proven why people think her tattoos are bad because they are bad look at the end of the day if the client is happy with the work then that's all that matters i personally do not think these tattoos are very good and what i think she's doing is kind of Taking advantage of people a little bit. Kind of taking advantage of people's hate for their their bad tattoos. She states in a video talking about her pricing that she will do anything to get somebody in that chair. I'll do a buy one, get one free. I'll do a buy one, get a piercing free. I'll do whatever I have to do to lock you in and get you in my chair so I can get that badass Louis Vuitton bag or I can get that 20 cases of water bottles. I don't discriminate. That's that's all that she really cares about is getting someone in the chair. She she doesn't matter if it's money, water, whatever she needs to trade for a tattoo. She'll get someone in that chair, get a tattoo, get another one free, just so that she can get them in there, get them tatted up, and get a transaction. And this is where things get a little bit, a little bit morally gray, because by the sounds of that, it's kind of like I don't care what I'm tattooing on my clients as long as I get something out of it. I'll slap anything on them, which some tattoo artists are fine with, and I guess she is fine with that. Some other tattoo artists, that kind of goes against their morals. I think that is a little bit of a moral gray area there. Anyway, guys, I don't want to send any hate her way. It's just something that I found and I wanted to talk about. I hope that the clients are happy with their tattoos and I hope that she gets better as a tattoo artist moving forward. It's just something that I wanted to talk about and, and get off my chest because I've been seeing these on my For You page all month. Anyway, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Leave a comment of a, a little skull emoji because uh, that's my, that's gonna be my next tattoo. Not the, not a skull emoji, but maybe like a skull of, of some description. And hopefully I'll see the stencil before I get it tattooed on me. Anyway, and with that, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.